Thank you. Um, we're on Facebook. Good. Beautiful. Hello, everybody, and welcome. How was everybody's uh, Shavuos, Ten Commandments, cheesecake, and everything else? <laughs> Very good. Wonderful, wonderful, beautiful. Okay. Oh, give me a moment. That is um, getting tuned over here. We have to get Pirki Avot. Hello, hello. Welcome to Karen. How are you, Karen? And Shaul, Herschel, Michael, Reggie, Virginia, Aliba. Oh, Aliba, where's Tavita? Together. Oh, no, unfortunately, she had to take our dad to get some lab work done, but she will catch the replay. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Richard, Abigail, Diane, welcome everybody. Okay. Let's get organized over here so we can get it. Okay. So, everybody had a good choice? Yes? Everybody good? Thumbs up? Wonderful. Great. Good to be back. Um, it's wonderful to celebrate. I also enjoy the regular routine of day in, day out, of the learning, the engagement, to be uh, together with everybody here. So uh, we're back. Let me share the screen over here. We are learning Pirki Abbas, the ethics of our fathers. We are in chapter one. We are in the sayings of Hillel, Hillel Azakin, Hillel the Elder. So the last one we did was Mishnah number 12. Hillel said to be a disciple of Aaron, a lover of peace, a pursuer of peace, one who loves the creatures and draws them close to Torah. He went at length and discussed how an individual should be truly a lover of peace greater than a lover of truth. Because truth could bring you to a place where you could hurt people. Peace, though, will bring you to a place that you can always be good to people. And that's greater to be good to people, a lover of peace, than to be a lover of truth. Now, truth is good to have both. But that is the uniqueness of what we learned. So let us continue with Hillel and some of more of his moral uh, teachings in Mishnah Yud Gimel 13. So I'm going to read it in Hebrew and then translate it into the English. So he would also say, one who advances their name, a person's name, destroys their name. In other words, you're looking to advance. It's probably this saying goes against all of Western culture. One who advances, looking to advance their name, destroys their name. That's totally au contraire to Western civilization, that everything is about being self-fulfilled, increasing the presence of self, the greatness of self, in a positive, good way, right? Hillel says it, well, that advance is destroying your name. Hmm. What does that mean? Why? Then he continues, as one who does not increase, diminishes. What does that mean exactly? If you don't increase, 
then you diminish um, diminishing what diminish what are we and what is the reference over there further he says one who does not learn is deserving of death wow that's a powerful statement so someone doesn't learn actually there's other translations that one who doesn't teach in other words you learn something and you know what you know something and you don't teach it you're deserving of death that's also a very strong statement. <laughs> what does that mean? The one who makes personal use of the crown of Torah shall perish. Also another very harsh statement. What does it mean that you're going to make use of the crown of Torah? What is the crown of Torah? That you shall perish. Again, a very strong and harsh statement. We're coming from where he such such positive statements in the previous one of being a lover of peace, pursuing peace, to now something that seems to be quite the contrary. Um, you know, things that you might be sensing, you know, um, a sense of fullness in you. So how do we understand the continuation or the continuity from Mishnah 12 to this one, number 13. Anybody else have any other questions or any issues or challenges with this Mishnah before we kind of dive into it? We have on uh, Zoom, we have on Facebook, we have on Clubhouse. Anybody? Yeah, Rabbi? Yes. Shol, um, right? Just looking at this, you would think it was something that Shammai would say. That it would be a exactly. interpret, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well yeah. said. You know, yeah. the harshness uh, sounds like something that Shammai would say. Yeah. We know that Hillel was very soft. Yeah. And this is not a soft statement. This is a very harsh, uh, harsh statement. Yeah. Over here. So how do we understand that exactly? Well said. Okay. Anybody else? Um, I, I had a thought that uh, about the increasing versus diminishing of of just uh, spiritual light. That, that's other than that, no. I, okay. They yeah. answered most of okay. it. Already. Thank you. Okay. Good. Good point. We'll touch upon that. Okay. So let's try to take this apart. Um, so the truth is, uh, so that I've explained is interesting. Like. Hillel, coming from the previous one, he is coming to uh, bring us kind of down. And why would he bring us down? Is because a person who becomes a disciple of Aaron might be a little full of themselves. Look at this. I'm, a, I'm such a lover of peace. Not only do I love peace, but I pursue it. Not only that, I appreciate and love people just because they're creations of God. And I work to bring them closer, you know, to the teachings of Torah. It's easy for someone to become full of themselves. Be have a sense of pride. I mean, after all, you know, look what you're doing. Look what you're accomplishing. And with this is what Hillel wants to prevent that we shouldn't get full of ourselves in the sense of pride in the achievements um, of, or I don't know if the achievements is right. I, I wouldn't say in the achievements, but in the sense of self, full of self in one's achievements. Achievements are great, you know, when uh, doing the things that we previously mentioned, but it shouldn't bring to a feeling of pride and arrogance. And even Hillel himself, once had a taint of arrogance. As we mentioned previously that Hillel, he made Aliyah from Babylon to Israel. Uh, remember, he passed away in the year eight of the Common Era. So this is before the Common Era that he came to, uh, to Israel from Babylon. And again, a reminder that Israel at that time, even though it was before the second, the destruction of the Second Holy Temple, which was in the year 69 of the Common Era, right? Um, 
most of the Jews lived in Babylon. They didn't live in Israel. Right? So, um, you know, a lot of the great scholars were in Babylon, not in Israel. Yet, there's something special about scholarship and leadership in the land of Israel, even if the majority of Jews are not there. They're in Babylon. So he came. Um, he came in order to be a part of the Torah wisdom uh, that would be in the Holy Land. And he came and there was a, uh, a, a problem that the rabbinic leaders had that for years they couldn't solve. And guess what? Hillel was able to solve the halachic dilemma. They were stumped. He had the answers. They saw the great virtue in him and the great uh, knowledge and leadership capabilities that they actually appointed him and installed him as the leader, um, which then he began to extensively teach Torah teachings uh, to the students of the day. One time in a, in a lecture, he, I guess the students were not so actively engaged. They were maybe a little, um, shall we say, on the lazy side, uh, not so as focused. And he reprimanded them. He says, how could it be me coming from Babylon that I should become the leader here? As opposed to, you know, just to give context to that, you know, the Holy Land is Holy Land. It really is the Holy Land. So much so that the air that you breathe there the Talmud tells us, our sages tell us that Avira da'ara machkin, that the air in Eretz Israel makes you smarter, makes you wiser. So in other words, there should be greater sages in the land of Israel rather than him who came down from Babylon. Those sages that lived there for you know decades, they should be greater. He says, how can me? He says, you were lazy. You didn't put yourself to the to the work. And, and you didn't serve the giants of the day, Shammai and Avtalion, who were the leaders before Shammai and Hillel. You didn't serve them appropriately. You were kind of lazy. Now, you have to understand, he's a, he, you know, he's a great scholar and a, and, a, and a very, you know, and a righteous individual. But there was a little taint over here of a little taint, a little, very small of self-importance. That as a result, in the middle of his lecture, they, uh, you know, he, he went from rebuking and now went back to his uh, teachings. And he was asked a question and he said, you know what? I used to know that and I forgot that. He realized why did he forget? Because, and again, you know, I forget a lot. <laughs> so I, and I'm sure most of us forget, right, things. But, you know, because, you know, we are who we are. But we're talking about Hillel. Hillel should forget something. He forgot. I forget. We all forget. Not Hillel. The fact that he forgot something that he knew. That came from somewhere. That came because there was a little smidge of self-importance. And because of that, he forgot. That's the background to this Mishnah. That when we do good, we are lovers of peace. We pursue peace. We do so much good. There will come to us as a result a sense of self Ah, ah, feel good about myself. And they say, oh my gosh, hey, what do you mean? I'm, I'm trying to feel good about myself all the time. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why the mission is coming to tell us. Hello is coming to say, you are seeking to advance your name. That you should feel good about yourself because others look good, uh, uh, feel good about you, you're going to lose your name.
going to lose your name. Because you're looking for a name, you're going to lose your name. If you're looking to do good, for goodness sake, for God's sake, oh, okay. That is wonderful. But if you're looking that through this, it should bring some kind of glor self-glorification, then you will lose your name. You won't get the glorification. That's what Hillel is telling us over here. Now, again, he's coming from, on a personal level, on from such a minute level of, you know, valuing self, and therefore rebuking the students of his day. Um, but for us, we can understand on a more simple level that we're seeking, um, you know, the good name. You're going to lose your good. You're going to lose your name. We're going to come back to this because we need to understand on, on a deeper level, you know, we're going to compare this with the teachings from King Solomon. But I want to take this a step deeper. In life, whatever you go after, whatever you run after, you don't attain. You're looking to enjoy life? You're going to be miserable. Because <laughs> exactly what you're running after is what where you're not going to get. Right? Exactly what you're running after, what you want, is exactly what's going to elude you. Think about it in our own lives. There's a truth to that. Right? Why? How come? Because it's all about me. It's all about me. And therefore, um, I'm not going to attain it. So if I'm seeking that name, I'm not going to get the name. I'm going to lose it, as a matter of fact. Why? Because then I'm going to do things that will be in order to be self-glorified or to be, you know, uh, to help self-gratification. And therefore, what I'm going to do is things that will be compromising in my values. I'm going to compromise as a result. That's what this is saying here. Hmm. Any questions or comments on that before we go further? We have on Clubhouse, we have on Zoom, we have Facebook, anybody? Once again, Rabbi, I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't see placing everything that I seek in that kind of a category. If you seek a a, a, a wife or a, a, a goal in life, uh, things like that. Give me an example. So seeking a wife. Seeking a wife. So, uh, yes. So the question is, <laughs> if, you don't, if you're seeking a wife because you're seeking a, a life, then you're not going to get life by having a wife. <laughs> you follow? Like, well, not gonna have a life. No, but not gonna have a wife would be another thing entirely. No, 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 no. no. Follow by what I just said. Follow what I just said. Mm -hmm. If you're seeking a wife because I want to have a life, oh, now that's a whole. Yes, I see. So then I won't have a life by having a wife. I might have a wife, but I'm not gonna have a life. Mm. I'm not going to. <laughs> aspirations in general i'm trying to figure a fine so, line on that well I, I'm, we're going to go further i'm uh, I, I didn't i'm not finished with this i'm coming back to it okay uh eliana hello yeah, uh, wait, yeah i'm here sorry took, yeah took a second hey um maybe it's along the same lines that the other speaker was speaking on but how do you find that balance between you know for instance i'm you know looking at changing career so to speak i don't i don't even really know how to 
put it because I don't know what I'm doing in my life right now. But, <laughs> nice. um, gotcha. you know, but, you know, okay, just for sake of a background, I'm currently an insurance agent. We'll take it back. I was a banker and I wanted to keep Shabbos, so I literally quit my job without a job. And two years later, to the day, Hashem provided, you know, a completely different career. And I feel the change coming. And I know that he is, you know, like, I feel like I'm supposed to be, you know, in my next change of career. I'm an insurance agent now, you know, but am I looking to be a speaker, speaking to people how to find their joy? But if I'm like, how do you balance that? Hey, this is what I want to do. This is my passion with if I'm seeking to do it, I'm going to fail because I don't think any of us want to fail at anything. Right. You know, in the sense of, you know, excellent. not learning from the failure. Yeah. Excellent question. So, so if you're seeking to, 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 to keep Shabbos, to serve God, in other words, that, that's what you're doing. Why are you keeping Shabbos? To serve God, because that's, you know, what God wants you to do. And that's what you're seeking. Are you really going to end up true? Are we really going to be such great servants of God? Maybe not. But you know, maybe not, but that's okay. Because you are, because there, you're not seeking self-glorification. You're not seeking even self fulfillment you're seeking to do what god needs of you that's very different seeking to do what god needs from you than seeking what you want to you know what humanly people want is self-gratification self-glorification and that's the distinction over here remember one who seeks to advance their name loses their name so you're seeking to you know are you seeking to keep Shabbos in order that you could, uh, you know, advance your agenda? Then that would be a, a question. That would be a, an issue then. But if you were seeking Shabbos to observe Shabbos because that's what Hashem needs from you, so then you're advancing in your life. Absolutely. You are moving forward and you are becoming, you know, um, but you're not seeking it's not about seeking, you know, self-gratification or self-glorification. It's seeking just to do what Hashem needs of you and wants of you. Is that, is that no, that, I mean, that answers, to me, that's easy for the spiritual matters. You know, like, it when I quit my banker job after 10 years to keep Shabbos, you know, it was, it was like, I'm doing this for Hashem. But, like, where I'm sitting now, where... where I, you know, like I'm going into life coaching and that type of thing, which in our Western society is, hey, promote your name, promote your name. How do you find that balance where I'm wanting to do this to bring people closer to Hashem, at, but at the same time, you know, like, how? Do, where do you find that balance, I guess, is right. my ultimate question. So, great. So, uh, you know, we're talking about motivation over here. Motivation is something inside of you, right? So as, as long as you are clear, and that's why uh, th this comes as a, the, the next Mishnah from Hillel, first Mishnah was, hey, exactly what you're saying, exactly what you're doing, um, you know, trying to help creatures and, and bring peace to people in their lives. That's amazing. That's beautiful. So that's why he's exhorting over here and say, hey, be careful. In doing that, make sure that you check what your intent is. Is your intent just to get a, you know, a, 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 you know, hey, I'm, I'm a great therapist, I'm a great this, and your name out there, or is your intent to truly bring peace and help other people? So that, that's exactly the point he's making over here. You're not saying, and, and as a matter of fact, that's the continuation, that someone doesn't add, then they will decrease. In other words, a person, like you're saying, Eliana, yourself, well, hey, look at the exhortion over here. Maybe um, I shouldn't get into this because, uh, uh, you know, maybe, no, 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 no. You've got to, uh, you've got to increase in the good that you're doing. You've got to increase in the teaching that you're doing. Um, and why? Because if you don't increase, you will decrease, you will become less. So the, the, and that's the next point that he's making that a person might feel, oh, you know, if I'm going to advance my, if I'm only going to advance myself, then, oh, maybe um, I should stay away from this. No, 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 no. Increase. Don't decrease. 
No. Okay, so that's that balance of that's Nassau the balance and, uh, and hold, right? Yeah, right, exactly. That's the balance that, that you need. Exactly. So that's what the mission is telling us over here. That again, you might think because maybe my intention might, you know, it's hard to always know what your intention is. You know, maybe consciously we're one thing and subconsciously we're another thing. It's possible. And and so the Mishnah Hillel is telling us, don't let that hold you back. Increase in the good that you're doing. Don't decrease because maybe my intention isn't so good. As a matter of fact, it was once a chassid who came to Midler Rebbe. And, and Mitla Rebbe, the, the Alta Rebbe's son, who was the Rebbe at the time, and he said, you know, I, you tell us that we should go around from communities to teach people, and I'm going around to teach. But you know what? It's making me feel like really good about myself. I feel like, a, you know, ah, what an accomplished, you know, because I, I'm, I have a good tongue. I, I, I'm able to express the things well. People get it. They're inspired. So I, I'm thinking I should stop, right? Exactly this idea here. Maybe I'm, you know, I'm advancing my own self-image over here. My name, maybe that's what I'm advancing. So he, he said to him in Yiddish, uh, he says, you should, be, you should become a tzibola, which means an onion. You should stink like an onion, right? You stink. Right, because your self-aggrandizement over here, but you should continue teaching. Don't decrease, increase. That itself is the fact that we, uh, Eliana, that you're concerned that you are doing this properly. That itself is the statement. As is this chassid came to the middle of it, like I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling a satisfaction in what I'm doing. And therefore, maybe I'm uh, being motivated by self-aggrandizement. So, you know what? The very fact that, that you're concerned about that, that itself is a good sign and therefore continue. Therefore continue. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your question that, you know, brought, you know, a clarity to the idea over here. Um, so, it's a, you know what? It's saying like this. So the Rebbe explains like this. If we, uh, you know, anybody's got lots of money, they know, hopefully, that the only reason they have lots of money is that they can do lots of good with the money. They have to be charitable. You know, Bill Gates understands that. Warren Buffett understands it. You know, and we all understand that. But we all have wealth of different sorts. So if you have a wealth of wisdom, a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of teachings, right? So you might say, but okay, I have a wealth of it, but I also have a animal soul that is like, you know, likes to uh, feel good about myself and feels, you know, accomplished and feel, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, on top of the world. So what I have, I have two, two competing things here. I have a wealth of knowledge I could share with someone or others, but I also have an animal soul that is want, wants to feel good about myself, not righteous. So I have that animal soul. So you might say, well, you know what? Don't share that wisdom. And, and probably some kind of uh, philosophies would say that. Don't share the wisdom because you're full of yourself. And you're going to become arrogant through doing that. But what do we just say here? No, no, no. Increase. Don't decrease. Increase. Even though you, you, know, you might even have a chance of losing your name. You might become an onion. Stink. Because you're, you're full of yourself of self aggrandizement But the very fact that you're concerned about that, that itself is amazing. And furthermore, what wins out? Doing the good. How come? Maybe hold back. Why should doing the good? How come? Because ultimately, you know what's going to happen? The good that we go, that we in the teachings that we give of of Jewish ethics and Jewish values and uh, of, of of Torah, ultimately. It is 
God's wisdom, and it will bring us back to a good place, to even a wholesome place from within. So even though right now maybe uh, I'm feeling the, that self-satisfaction, I feel the self-aggrandizement, I might, might, might be even somewhat want to promote self, but the teachings themselves will inspire not just the person that you're teaching, but you too. And therefore you will do it with a greater purity as a result and a greater goodness just because you want or you, because you're motivated, why? Because just as God entrusted wealthy people with lots of money to do good, so likewise, God has entrusted everybody with a wealth of some sorts. And the only reason is to share it with others. Everybody has wealth. And if you don't share it with others in an increasing manner, that wealth will decrease. So if you have Torah knowledge, increase in your sharing. If you have literal money wealth, increase in your giving. Why? Because it's not yours anyways. God gave it to you, entrusted it to you that you should share it with another. So just that notion of we recognize that it was entrusted with us and that we need to increase in our giving and sharing it with others that will itself also help us to not become full of ourselves. Because we know the only reason I was given this is so I could share it. So then even though I do have, we all have an animal soul, we all have a desire from the animal soul to build ourselves, to build our ego, to fill the gaping holes in our soul that we have because we're, everybody is hurting on some level. And by doing good, it fills that gap and makes me feel better about myself. That self-aggrandizement, that seeking my name. In the end, you're going to lose that name by, if that's what your only motivation is. But at the other hand, don't decrease because of that. Increase in doing, in sharing the wealth that you have. Because ultimately, it's going, the teachings themselves will bring you back to a wholesome place. Is that clear? That's a very powerful statement. Now, to such a degree is the obligation to share the wealth that we have. So there's uh, uh, two translations over here that whatever, if you don't learn, um, you deserve death. That's a pretty harsh statement, right? You don't learn, you deserve death. Um, there's another way is if you don't teach, you're deserving of death. Now, the death here doesn't mean obviously in a literal sense, um, but what it means is we, if life is all about only receiving, right, and, and not giving and not sharing, that is called death. That is called death. Does anybody know why the Dead Sea is called the Dead Sea? By the way, our learning... Because nothing lives in it because it has so much salt. Yeah, well, why is that? No. That's true, Katie. You're 100% correct. But why? Why is it that it's the only place on Earth that is called the Dead Sea? Why are there other seas that are called also similar name or that name dead sea it doesn't flow to the because ocean. it doesn't flow. it doesn't flow go ahead michael no, it doesn't flow to the ocean it doesn't flow anywhere it only takes it doesn't give and since it only takes as katie said right so it's full of salt it's full of minerals and uh as a as a, as a result uh there's no life there life means you take but you give from what you've been given. It doesn't, because it's the lowest point. <laughs> Since it's the lowest point, so it's not flowing anywhere else. Therefore, it's taking from everywhere, but not giving. That's dead. That's what the Mishnah is saying over here. If one does not teach, in other words, you've been given a wealth. And what's a wealth? Has there ever once 
Rabbi Farbingen said that if a child went to, to Cheder, went to learn the letter Aleph, and all they know is a little child knows the letter Aleph, doesn't know Bez, Gimel, doesn't know the whole Aleph Bez, but they know the letter Aleph. So the child should go out in the street and find another Jewish child and teach them the letter Aleph. That's the kind of mindset, right? Where is it? Based on the Mishnah here. You've been gifted something, a wealth of something that you could, that you know something. Teach it, share it. If not, that's death. Because if you don't teach what you know, that means you're a repository of all of that. And just like the Dead Sea, by not flowing into the other, into another river, into another lake, into the ocean ultimately, um, hence it only takes and doesn't give. And that's the idea over here. That, that's the idea to also to tie it up that someone is seeking to advance their name. In other words, you do, you're a do-gooder, you're, you're seeking peace. But you know why you're seeking peace for others? You know why you were there to help others? Because it's ultimately, it's not about helping the others. It's really about making me greater in the eyes of others. It's about me feeling good about myself. So in the end, it's all coming to me. That's, you're going to lose your name, ultimately, right? Even in such an instance, hey, you're still doing good. You're still teaching. You're still helping. So add, don't. So don't diminish, because ultimately it's going to bring you back to good. Because after all, here we're speaking about Torah teachings. If it's about self-help books, so maybe the self-help books won't help you. <laughs> but if it's Torah teachings, right? But in the end, it's divine wisdom. And the divine wisdom, the, 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 illum the luminary within the and the divinity within the teachings will bring back the individual to good. Good means here, not just doing good. We can do good, but doesn't mean we are good, right? We can do good, right? We can be, sir, pursue peace, but that's mean we're good because we're just full of ourselves in doing that. Comes the Mishnah here and says, no, no, no. Don't, don't be motivated by the self-aggrandizement. In the end, if you're seeking filling yourself, you're not going to be, you're not going to fill it. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to have it. Whatever you run after, you're not going to attain. Yet, continue that manner. Increase. Don't diminish. Maybe you stink like a tzibale, like an onion, but continue teaching. Why? Because that's the gift that you've been given. Whatever gift you have, Share it with another. That's what the mission is telling us. Any questions on this? Powerful idea. Eliana, any thoughts? Mayor, Jeff, Jeremy. Everybody's quiet. Contemplate. Hi, hi Rabbi. Oh, Richard. Go ahead, Richard. Yes. I, I just wanted um, to go back a bit uh, to something that we were talking about before, something that I've learned in Torah study. Um, when it comes to um, failure, a lot of times people think failure, they associate it with a negative um, connotation to it. And something I learned studying Torah with you is failure, it's not a negative thing. It's an opportunity for us to grow as individuals. So not to take it in a negative uh, aspect, but rather to look at it as an opportunity and a challenge for us to grow and develop even further. That's all I want to say. Thank you, absolutely. Right. Um, failure, uh, uh, yeah, ultimately there is no failure. Right. If we choose to see it as a failing, so then we failed, then we failed. <laughs> but if we see it as the, an opportunity for, for growth, then exactly, then it becomes an opportunity for growth. As um, tell the story of a guy who made a very big failure 
in the in a in a corporation that cost the corporation three million dollars. He came in. Uh, he came into the um, president of the corporation. He says, "I'm, I'm sure you, uh, you want to have my resignation for such a colossal failure." He says, "Are you crazy? We just invested three million dollars in you. <laughs> that failure, uh, you know." is a $3, a $3 million investment. So we're going to keep you because we invested a lot in you. Absolutely. Jeremy. Hi, Rabbi. Thank you. Um, I, I'm, um, I, I'm wondering how this is going to kind of apply to my life. Um, to, one, professionally, I'm a psychiatrist. Right. Um, and, and part of giving is kind of this kind of withholding and making space for another um, so I'm just wondering kind of what, what, how you think about that giving? And then the other piece is, um, what is a parent, uh, I see, I see you have 10 children on your bio, I have four uh, on my own. Um, and, and that, that's a, where I often feel depleted most. Um, and, um, you know, sometimes I have a lot to give, but sometimes I'm just really tired. Um, and I'm just wondering if either of those situations you have, have, have thoughts on. Sure. Uh, model together. Thank, yeah. Thank you. Very good questions. Um, so by, very good questions. So giving um, any wealth that you have, and again, all of us have some gifted wealth. Um, if it's about me, then, then I'm not really giving. I'm really looking to fill myself. If the, you know, I might be an act of giving the action might be giving, but the intent is to fill myself, and that's not truly giving. Truly giving is what the child needs or what the person needs, and not what you want, what you want from this. So, um, you know, to be able to put ourselves aside, and like you said, Jeremy, you said it well, um, to be able to refrain, hold back, uh, to refrain uh, at times is the true giving right, to make space for the other um, and, and not to overwhelm. So in the act of giving, sometimes we, we need to be able to know, you know, you know to, to be able to measure what that person can be a recipient of and not just what I want to give. Because I might want to give, but then it's not really giving and it's really in a sense, in a sense like you're giving, but on the other hand, you're taking. So it's not a true giving. Um, and, uh, and to, to the other point of, you know, that you're right, sometimes, uh, we are, um, exhausted physically, maybe emotionally, spiritually, and we feel on empty and we don't have what to give. That's okay. Sometimes, you know, it's, it, it, the point of giving over here, um, doesn't mean that we're always getting, you know, sometimes we have to know how to be a recipient. As a matter of fact, the first Mishnah of uh, Pirkei Avos is a you know, Moshe Kibol Torah. He received Torah. First, we need, before we can give, we need to be a true recipient. We know have, we have to know how to receive something. And if we can receive, whether it's divine wisdom or even a kindness from somebody, um, and, and how to know how to accept it appropriately and that itself takes what we call bittal self-abnegation takes takes a um a sense of you know it's even not about me and in, in the being the recipient you know it's like uh and how to know how to be a recipient appropriately then we can be a giver appropriately so yeah sometimes you know we're depleted and we just need to receive so we can fill ourselves in a way that we can again be uh be giving so uh, yeah we're not always in giving mode um we need to sometimes just be a recipient I thank hope, you i no, hope that helps sure. jeremy it does it really does spoke 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 to me spoke to my situation I okay appreciate you. all right that's beautiful 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 all right um so in uh, in summation in um, in summation, what do we have over here is a, um, something that seemed, you know, initially very harsh, but in the end is, uh, very, um, um, it's strong. It's not harsh, it's strong, but balanced in the manner that, um, that we need to, um, 
always be cognizant that, yeah, we're, we're here to do good. We're here to create peace. We're here to change the world for good and not to get caught up in ourselves in that, um, in, in, in that, the good that we're achieving and that, uh, that sometimes it could be just an advancement of self, to advance my name. To, to feel good about me, to look good to, in the eyes of others, uh, and, and so on. And when that happens, then we lose our name ultimately. Even in such a case, if it's you're doing good, don't decrease, increase, because ultimately it'll bring you, because we're talking about here that you have an awareness that perhaps, you know, you are um, uh, motivated by self-aggrandizement. The very fact that we that we're aware of that and that bothers us, that itself is half of the solution. And therefore, don't decrease, increase in doing and giving of the wealth that you have, because um, that's why it was given to you is is to be able to share. Because if you don't, then that is called death. Death is just taking and not giving. Um, that's called death. And that is uh, today's Mishnah. And we will continue. Yes, uh, Michael. Just quickly, it's just the same thought as before, sort of. I, my life's, uh, I live centrally around trying to follow the right path and do good for goodness sake or however you want to put that. Uh, but it's, it's always a challenge and I'm always left with that kind of a balance. That's where I come from on most things here. So I just wanted to express that. It's what he'd said before. Thank you. Yeah, that, that is the challenge. And, and, and the beautiful thing over here is, you know, being aware of that challenge. And that's what the Misha Hilla wants to make that perfectly clear for us. Being aware of that challenge doesn't mean to therefore decrease, you know, in the good that we do. We know we should increase um, in, in, in doing and uh, ultimately uh, the, the teachings themselves and the goodness that we do will impact us in a, you know, that we do it for, as you say, goodness sake, for God's sake, for uh, a higher purpose and not just, you know, motivated for uh, our own, you know, uh, self glorification. All right, beautiful. We will continue this uh, tomorrow, 12.45 again. We'll do then actually the famous um, saying of Hillel. This will, tomorrow will be the third uh, saying of Hillel. And, you know, if, I'm not, if I am not for myself, who will be for me? And if I am only for myself, what am I? And if not now, when? That's tomorrow. If you want to prepare for that, please do. So we can have an uh, interesting discussion. And... Um, We'll bring to completion the, the three sayings and three comments of, of hello. In the meantime, have a wonderful day, folks. Oh, Katie, sorry. sorry, go ahead. You wanted to. Well, you said prepare for something. What What is it? Is it Mishnah 13? 14. We did today 13. Tomorrow is oh, okay. 14. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right, folks. Have a wonderful day. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Wonderful Thanks. class. Thank you, Jeremy. I'll end up for your questions. And thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good to be back. Bye. 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 Have a wonderful day.